Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to another Super Tease video. And in this one, should you main a Resto Shaman in Shadowlands? We're going to talk about some of the pros and the cons of the specialization as a whole, standing in both Raids, Mythic Plus, and PvP, uh, and what I've decided as my build for it, as you are going to have to pick a highly customized build. There are an infinite, seemingly infinite amount of choices and decisions to make, and you're going to have to base them on your priorities. What do you want to perform the most in? What content is the most desirable to you? What achievements or transmogs do you want to go after? Are you willing to sacrifice a bit of inefficiency in one avenue for more efficiency in another? And I'm going to be going over my thought process in that decision making. Should you be someone interested in Mania Shaman, which you probably are if you're watching this, and you're probably also a little bit masochistic. Uh, Shaman is kind of one of those specs that's in PvP, it's up and down. Mythic Plus, yeah, you don't exist. Raids, you're almost always desirable, just you have massive healing output, and Spirit Link Totem is probably a number one raid cooldown in the game. So as a whole, in terms of pros and cons there, you're very desirable in raids. You depending on tuning have a great toolkit when it comes to pvp so if you are tuned adequately which another tuning pass just happened and i was playing some it felt pretty strong in pvp actually in fact really strong in pvp mythic plus you're still suffering and the main reason in my mind that you're suffering as a mythic plus healing specialization is that other healers get their damage out faster also, they can heal while doing their damage. Way of the Crane, Avenging Crusader, Heal Over Time effects from a Resto Druid, Discipline Priest healing through their damage. Resto Shaman just have a difficult time pumping damage out and keeping their team alive at the same time. In PvP, they can kind of get away with it because you can crowd control enemy targets that are attacking your team. And oh, I've got some free time to get a flame shock and a lava burst out. But in Mythic Plus, it's all about just weaving in a lot of damage at the same time while healing, which is very difficult for Resto Shaman. So in my mind, if you were somebody looking to really prioritize Mythic Plus and your success in Mythic Plus, you may not want to opt into the Restoration Shaman. It's a spec that I think you can can make work and I've seen people make work but there will be a stigma towards you uh, in that avenue but raiding and PvP it's looking like it's going to be a really good and fun spec so we should talk about more specifics here with Shadowlands you're gonna have to select the Covenant right in my mind I'm going with the Necro Lords I really like what's available in their build obviously I'm a bit more oriented to PvP, but I want to check out the raids and I want to check out Mythic Plus as well. So I take those into considerations when I'm making these selections on my conduits and on my covenant choice as a whole. So there have been a lot of changes to Primordial Wave. It's now instant cast. It will apply Riptide to a target and it will also cause your next healing wave to heal all the targets affected by your Riptide. So with the build that I'm running, I run Torrents to get more healing from Riptide. I run Echo of the Elements to get more charges of healing stream totems to buff my Riptides. And this entire build basically revolves around Riptide. If you were in a raid, you would be getting Riptide on as many targets as possible. Primordial Blast or Primordial Wave, sorry. And then Healing Wave and heal all those targets. I think you'd get good raid healing efficiency. You'd also get good uh, healing efficiency from Mythic Plus as well. It's functioning very similar to a Beacon of Light. So getting Riptide on multiple targets and then going for Primordial Wave and then a big healing wave to pick the team up, um, I think would be a good avenue. It's gonna save you mana instead of just spamming Chain Heal. And it's also the advantage of being a Shadow Spell. So if you're interrupted on a heal, like a Healing Wave, you can then cast Primordial Wave and instead and get a little bit of a guaranteed heal in your downtime. Uh, in my mind, Fleshcraft is a really underrated Covenant ability, and PvE, it seems like, from my gauge of it, is that it's it's not valuable at all. You're just you're spending time, and you have to channel it, and you get this shield. Um, now, obviously, before a big mechanic is about to hit you, would be great to kind of just soak the hit. I think that's where it's going to exist mostly in PvE. But when we get into the conduits, I think with PvP, it's likely going to be the ultimate form, where while channeling the ability and after completing the channel, you'll be immune to crowd control. In PvP specifically, this is one of the most fun spells I've experienced with such high outplay potential. I've talked about it already on my Restoration Druid video, but it's the same for Restoration Shaman. You can really feel like you're predicting 
predicting your opponents and outplaying them with this. And then again, in PvE, its use is going to be a big shield before a massive hit. Um, or potentially, if you wanted to run ultimate form with it as well, if you know an AoE stun is coming from a monster, you could channel it before the stun hits you and then not have to deal with it and heal your group up maybe through some massive damage. So I, in my mind, it functions for both, which is why this is a build that I'm selecting that I think prioritizes PvP, but will also work in pve so let's jump down to the conduits a little bit more specifically uh, using flesh crap with nearby corpses derives a benefit from a corpse it's just a little bit of a minor benefit i went with tumbling waves first although i would suggest that you run with swirling currents first um, but i can't switch them because one week lockout let's hope that changes um, but if you wanted to multi-spec running the covenant specific conduit so in this case tumbling waves means that at the beginning of the expansion while you're working your way down this tree you'd still have a solid option of trying the other specializations out without feeling like you're too far behind in all of the content so if you're a multi-specker you might want to consider going after this conduit first but in my mind these swirling currents here um, which is also a potency conduit is just so good you use healing stream totem and then it will increase the healing of your next three healing surges healing waves or riptides again with torrent and with primordial wave uh, you get a lot of healing on this with riptide it's really good in pvp it's going to set you up in mythic plus set you up in raiding too potentially uh, to just get these massive bomb healing waves that are going to be really mana efficient and in my mind it was the most fun gameplay because it was kind of like healing stream totem takes on unleash life's purpose so you prop a healing stream then you get swirling currents you got a choice so i'm going to go for three big riptides onto multiple targets to set up for primordial wave to go to a massive healing wave on a multiple targets it's really just fun gameplay wise uh, which is why i've decided to opt for it over some of the other conduits that would benefit you more for throughput and raid like chain heal um i often consider like is this a conduit that i can use in all content right so most of the conduits that are good for raiding that buff things like chain heal or healing rain are not strong in other aspects of the game but a conduit like this which is amazing in pvp right is also adequate in pve so i'm obviously biased because i prioritize pvp if you prioritize pve you may not think like this you may want to go for the ones that benefit you there but i like to leave my options open and try different content out and going for this specific build i think enables me to still work in a raid like totally fine um, maybe I can't get a number one parse. I think I could outplay people and get a number one parse, but um, maybe I'm not a mythic world first raider, right? So this might not be gauged towards you if that's what you were going after, but this opens me up to really fun gameplay and it opens up me to multiple avenues of content. Um, the other ca conduit as I was moving down, which I opted for was this finesse one where the cooldowns of your tremor totem, earthbind and cap totem are reduced. I think over time, as you level this conduit up, it's gonna start to get major advantages uh, with a significantly reduced tremor totem cooldown in PVP, obviously. Priests, warlocks, they're likely to be prevalent. You'll be able to counter their fears more readily. And also in PVE and Mythic Plus, getting an AOE stun like the capacitator totem may make you more desirable for Mythic Plus. You're still a rest of Shaman, don't get your hopes up there, but I was thinking that, taking that into consideration. Earthbind is just a minor advantage. Again, probably gonna see more use in PVP than PVE, allowing you to stop enemy healers from drinking around pillars, stop enemies from retreating, stop enemies from advancing, really useful in PVP. In PVE, there's just so many other slows that are always being applied that this one's kind of just somewhat underrated. You're not going to use Earthbind too much in PvE, but the Tremor and the Cap Totem get value in both avenues of content, and it, it felt good um, play-wise. These are fun totems, and they have really big impact if you can use them uh, correctly, so this is why I went with this as my Finesse Conduit. This tier doesn't really ultimately matter in terms of your gameplay. It's just crafting whatever you want to do here. Moving down further, the Embrace of Earth, which is a potency conduit. Earth Shield increases your healing done to the target by an additional 5%. In my mind, again, this is just really good throughput for single target. Maybe less valuable, right, than some of the potency conduits for AoE healing in raid. But in my mind, I'm going to use Earth Shield in a raid. I'll be a better tank healer. And I get to use Earth Shield in Mythic Plus, which will be great. And I get to use Earth Shield in PvP. I'm willing to sacrifice whatever it ends up being 10% more healing on my chain heal, which is all just padded healing anyway at some point. Um, I don't, I personally don't prioritize all of the raiding conduits. I think that going for something like this 
it plays better to me personally, but that's why I'm leaving it open on the table to you watching the video. If you're more interested in rating, just take that in mind. And then the swirling currents, which I, if I was maining resto, I would put before tumbling waves. Um, but if I was wanting to multi-spec, I might put down here because then as I'm grinding through the first couple of months, these are conduits that are still useful uh, to the other specializations. And then finally you'd reach ultimate form. So in my mind, I feel like I could play this build in all aspects of the game. I think that I could make myself competitive in all aspects of the game using this and not having to think too much because you're probably also thinking like, oh my God, how many conduits? Oh my God, how many soul buying conduits options? Oh my God, how many legendaries? Oh my God, how many? Oh my God, like there's just choice, 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 choice. So what I've tried to do here is just come up with a build that I think is really solid in the area of the game that I enjoy, which is PVP, but also will work, right? It will function in Mythic Plus, it will function in raiding. Uh, and I think that I could be competitive with it while still retaining all of the fun gameplay aspects from the Necro Lord Covenant choice um, and from my legendaries, which we should talk about a little bit more. Uh, my first legendary I'm going after on a Restoration Shaman would be the Healing Shield or the Earth Shield Healing Legendary. Increases the healing of Earth Shield by 300%. And if your target is below 50% health, um, your and your healing wave adds a stack of Earth Shield to your target up to a maximum of nine stacks. So you're getting some extra scaling here, right? Because with Shamans, when they heal targets at low health, your mastery amplifies that healing by a lot. And then this on top of it. This could help you out in PvP, obviously, but also in Mythic Plus, so you can have your Earth Shield on the tank, rely on the Earth Shield to heal the tank while you're trying to get some Chain Lightning out, um, Flame Shock and Lava Burst out to try and add some damage to the group so you can be more desirable and competitive because as a healer in Mythic Plus, it's very important that you're also trying to get damage out as often as you can. So I felt like I could use this in Mythic Plus and PvP. And then in raiding, I would be the tank healer, right? This build was, is much more oriented towards in raiding, in my mind, as a, as a tank healer. Healer. Um, so, and with that big AOE healing wave, as long as I'm casting the healing wave on the tank as the main target, it then cleaves to all of my riptides with the primordial wave. And I also get the benefit of getting an extra charge of earth shield on my tank. So that seemed like a lot of fun synergies there. Um, which is why this is the legendary that I would personally go for. Um, some other strong contenders that were standing out, which I'm not sure if I have in my bag currently, they wiped all of our characters. Um, every forecast of Riptide also applies Riptide to another friendly target near your Riptide target. So if you really wanted to be a raiding shaman and like a Riptide shaman, this would just get you Riptides going onto so many different targets. This in my mind is going to play entirely to myth to raiding or raided battlegrounds, but not be as good in Mythic Plus and not be as good in, in ranked arena. So to me, it's not one that I would immediately go after. Maybe if I wanted to try and go for a parse in the raid at some point, uh, I would I would try and target this with the Necrolord build that I've decided to go, but it, it was pretty hard. And then another one I was considering was casting Riptide as a 5% chance to activate Ascendance for six seconds. Ascendance is just a really good uh, cooldown in PvP. In PvE, you don't see it. You don't really ever spec it, but then this would also give you Ascendance even if you weren't talented into it, which is kind of interesting um, to try out in PvE instead. Um, but other than that, uh, in my mind, if, if I was like, just looking for like a cookie cutter build, I didn't want to think about it. I want to build that works for me in PVP. I want to build that is at least functioning in PVE raid and mythic plus to cross over to multiple parts of the game. This earth should legendary will also let me multi-spec because enhancement and elemental also benefit from this earth shield benefit. And it's just so great with the play style that I've decided I want to try and go with on the restoration shaman when it comes to necro Lord. So if you're interested in trying it, it, it is feeling a lot better. Again, you're going to feel weaker in mythic plus due to the reasons I highlighted at the start of the video, you're always a desirable raid healer. You just have amazing cooldowns. In PVP, you're also looking pretty competitive right now because most of your healing is coming from instant cast sources like Riptide, which in PVP is great because then you don't run the downsides of being interrupted or falling behind. Also, you get this really badass looking Necro Lord set. I mean, like, come on, are you serious right now? So this, this is the build that I've come up with. I've, I've been trying to come up with what I want to alt, right? And I've, I tried Resto Shaman after the recent wipe because I hadn't got my hands on it really. And I was actually really enjoying it. Some kind of like little minor highlights that you might uh, find interesting, at least for PvP. Voodoo Mastery reduces the cooldown of Hex by 20 seconds. Hex at the moment at max level in Shadowlands is a 20 second cooldown, which means you can make Hex have no cooldown. 
You want to turn a bunch of people into frogs. You want to make it rain frogs? We can make it rain frogs. So I thought that was pretty cool um, and pretty fun. Whether or not that ends up going live, right? It's beta is a whole other thing. But you can. I'm hoping that you can see at the end of the video my my thought process here, my plan for my gameplay being around Riptide and then getting massive cleave healing waves in Mythic Plus and raiding, as well as in Arena, although to a lesser extent because you're only healing three targets, right? I I think that I can make this work in all aspects of the game, and I'm still desirable in raids. I might struggle a bit in Mythic Plus. I would like to say, well, just respec Enhancer Ellie, and then you're better in Mythic Plus, but uh, we all know that's not that's not happening. Um, but Resto Shaman looked like a really solid unit now after these recent round of changes. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like. Comment down below with your thoughts on my build, what you've been seeing other Restoration Shamans coming up with, what you personally think you're going to be going for. I'm very interested. Again, I want this to be a resource for everybody to make the correct decision when it comes to their gameplay in Shadowlands. I think it's really important to pick what stands out as fun and engaging to you because... I think that we're going to see a lot of changes even after the game goes live. It's going to be a roller coaster of, oh no, now Venthyr. Oh no, now Necrolord. Oh no, now Nightfae. Oh no, now. Da, 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 da. It's going to be a roller coaster. So, in my mind, I went with what looks really fun, has outplay mechanics to it. It brings in a new way of thinking about my Restoration Shaman as well. And even if it ends up being 10% less competitive, I'm going to have fun with it. I'm I'm putting a bit of faith in them to make it at least not massively worse than every other option, right? When they're balancing and tuning this. But overall, I, I thought that this was a really cool and unique build. And Restoration Shaman is standing out to me at the moment as a specialization, possibly as an alt. So if you wanted to main it, I think that it is still a good pick as well. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you like the content. I'll have links to my class recommendations, links to my class reviews. If you really want to dive deep into all of the details and kind of decide for yourself between this infinite buffet of possibilities to a specialization, that information will be all available to you above here in a moment. So thank you very much for watching and we will see you in the next video.